Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 46. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? All right. It's time for us to make me suffer. Yeah, this is this is definitely an episode of making Brad suffer, and it's going to be fantastic. So for those of you wondering what we're talking about, every six months we have separate recording seasons of which this is the last episode of this recording season before we take a couple weeks off for the holiday break and then we come back for the next chunk of weekly recordings during each of those six month segments the patrons get to vote on an episode every time our patrons are mean yeah so we just recorded the one for our other podcast solely singleton and it was also the patrons just really giving it to us but for Poor Hammer, we could have had fantastic things like the Black Library Book Club. That would have been fun. Yeah, we also could have done, you know, like a serious episode where we look at the rules of 40k versus AOS to figure out which rules are the best between the two. I actually think that'll be a really fun topic when we eventually cover it. We could have done all sorts of stuff. Instead, the winner by a large margin was Force Brad to hype up each major Space Marine chapter. For those of you at home wondering why that's a big deal, Space Marines is, by no small margin, my least favorite faction. (laughs) Our longtime audience members probably already know this fact, but I have to play nice today and give you all a uh, positive outlook on the Space Marines. So without any further ado, let's get to an hour of Brad being tortured. Sounds good. But before we begin... We need to get this warning out of the way. We're not going to talk about specific rules in this episode uh, because we have it on pretty good authority from leakers that there is going to be a new Space Marine 2.0 book coming out soon. So any rules we throw up on screen are very temporary. Any rules I say aloud are probably a waste of time to talk about in a month. We're going to focus more on the lore the looks, the general play style, the fantasy of each of these chapters and how they want to be playing. Also, as a warning, I am not going to interpret this as all 3,000 or whatever official canon chapters of Space Marines. I'm only going with ones that have official rules. Okay, I'm expecting some big hype, Brad. Sell me on Ultramarines. I I get the joke, but they're actually one of the easier ones for me to sell you on. (laughs) They're blue? They are blue. Don sold. (laughs) So, Ultramarines, you're the poster child. You are what's on the tin. Everyone knows what an Ultramarine looks like because you cannot get into 40k without seeing one at least 30 times. They are shoved in your face. We all know them. That being said... It's one of the easier sub-factions for me to hype up. First of all, you've got a pretty cool Roman theme going on. You've got what is, without a doubt, the most stable and successful part of the Imperium. Uh, They have the Ultramar sector, which is, like, the only part of human civilization that you would want to live in. And, like, even then, it's, like, a real stretch to want to live there. I was gonna say, I feel like that's... Not really true, but I guess in comparison to other things, it just being, like, not great is a good thing. Yeah. The Roman aesthetic to it is very cool. I will give them that. I like the whole, like, robed, ancient look they like to have, where you've got the toga and stuff. The Greek scholar, the Roman philosopher, yeah. I appreciate that standpoint of them. There's also, like, the plus side of however you end up painting your marines, You can play them as anyone. I will fight for your ability to do that at all times. But even the worst that guy in the world cannot point to a color scheme and go, that is not a canon ultramarine chapter from a book that I know, sir. Because every single chapter is secretly an ultramarine successor chapter. They have so many successor chapters, each with their own schemes and names, and it is impossible to list them. So it's one of those that, like, there's so much. It's not just blue. You can do anything. And I will fight for the fact that you can do any of these chapters in any paint scheme color you want and just say, I'm the such and such successor of the Dark Angels. I don't care. Yeah. But it is nice to have Ultramarines, like, have some lore behind it and really prop up the defense on that. 
Yeah, and I will say, Ultramarines, you do have the problem of you're the poster children and you're going to get a lot of extra flack for that because while a lot of us like to pick on Space Marines in general because it's really easy to pick on the favorite child, you're the favorite, favorite child. Even other Space (laughs) Marines get annoyed with you. You do have like a lot of books that are pretty bad that have been written over time, like just poorly written books, but you just have a lot of books in general. So there are tons of good ones you can read too. Yeah. And I mean, Ultramarines have been around for a while, so there's a lot, like you said. As bonus points, we'll talk about the Primarchs for each of the chapters because they each have a different Primarch other than some weird stuff we'll talk about later. Big bonus points for Ultramarines. You have the only living Loyalist Primarch right now, and Gilliman is like one of the only intelligent, sane people that you can have empathy for in the Imperium. Downside, get used to jokes about how much he (laughs) enjoys Elven Booty, namely from me, but uh... I mean, that's just all upside. (laughs) It's not like the man's wrong. I know, like, gotta respect the drip. Have you seen your brain's dump truck? (laughs) All right, enough of Ultramarines, let's keep going or we'll be here all week. We're going to move into Dark Angels. Dark Angels is the dark and brooding knights. Hell yeah, dude. You are the first legion, you are the first, you are the bestest because number one is the first number, and that (laughs) holds special weight for some reason. One of the cool things for you guys is you end up with a lot of the old tech from Emperor's storage locker, the super special secret collection that he kept around and gave to the Dark Angels for some reason. You're the keepers of the weapons of the Dark Age of technology, so you get to have like a really plasma-heavy army be very thematic if you're really liking plasma stuff. Okay. Is it like just weapons, or is it like just all the old tech? It is old weapons. that They have the armory. Okay. But it shows up mostly in the form of better handling plasma. Another cool thing with Dark Angels is you've got the wings, which is like the Raven Wing and the Death Wing. So if you want to have like a bike heavy army or you want to have a Terminator heavy, heavy armor style army, both of those can be part of Dark Angels. You get to paint three different paint schemes. You're basically playing three factions in one as a single sub faction of another faction. It's layer upon layer of too many rules, but we're going to spin this as a good thing. You're the special children who get all of the cool rules specifically to make your dreams come true. As a warning, though, if you are picking Dark Angels, currently if you want to play like a Deathwing heavy army, it relies a lot on Terminators who don't have a good Primaris equivalent yet until like the Gravis line gets more filled out. Yeah, I can feel the pain on that one from a Grey Knight. Yeah, so you're going to end up with a lot of the 511 Short King models. So if you like old Marines, cool. Dark Angels are definitely a good plus side for you. If you like the objectively better looking new stuff. It's probably coming. Well, there is that. That is true. But currently it's not there yet. It's probably coming reasonably soon. (laughs) I will say, like, lore-wise, with Dark Angels, you've got one shtick. It's really good as a hook to get people in, but you're going to get sick of it over time. Just as a warning in advance, you're going to grow bored of every story beat being the same of, we must stop the fallen. We must also kill innocent people who find out about them to save ourselves from being executed for our past crimes. We're so troubled and brooding. (laughs) And that's every Dark Angel story. It gets people in the door. People love the idea of it. It just... When you realize that the universe is static state and this is going to be every story you have for forever. Right. At a certain point, you've read all the Dark Angel books, even if new ones come out. But there is the very cool aspect of if you're into the power armor stuff and you want like knight, chivalry, middle ages, swords, all that stuff. If you're big into the Renaissance Festival or LARPing, this is probably one of the top two chapters I'd recommend for you because they are huge into the nightly stuff. All right. I mean, there's definitely a big following for that kind of thing. So I can see that being pretty cool. Into the final note of your Primark, you've got Lionel Johnson as a Primark. It's spelled wrong as a joke. Cool. There's a good and bad side 
to the news here. Uh, so good news, he's alive. He's just secretly taking a nap on the asteroid ship that the chapter flies around in. Uh, they don't even know he's there. So at any plot convenient moment, he could pop back alive and be like, hey, I'm Lionel Johnson. I'm back. That's cool. There's a bad side to that, though. Him being back is probably going to be kind of a bad thing because his character is incredibly boring and his entire shtick in the Horus Heresy is being a pompous dickhead. It's like literally his only <laughs> defining character trait to keep him separate from four other identical Primarchs. To be fair, that can be entertaining for a while. Like, sparingly used, being a pompous dickhead can be funny. I do think he only works as part of a wider yeah. character set. He gets old quick, kind of like the Dark Angels one note shtick gets old quick. If he comes back, cool, you get to paint up a Lionel Johnson and play him. But lore-wise, you may end up liking him about as much as Death Guard players like Mortarian. Oof. Ah, right, what do you want to hit next? Oh, uh, Dark Angel players, a final note for you. Your subreddit, if you ever go on Reddit, is not our Dark Angels. That's a different <laughs> subreddit. You might still like it, though. We can't even show it on YouTube. <laughs> that's not where you go. You can go there, but that's not where you're going for painting little green spacemen. It'll be a bit of a shock. Let's move into the other angels in the room. Okay. That is the... The Blood Angels. Blood Angels, obviously. Yeah, I knew that. So the Blood Angels are easy for me to hype up because they are probably my first, second, or third favorite Space Marine chapter. Well, I mean, they're just vampires, right? Yes. They're, they're pretty easy to like. They're pretty basic. Like, I've read three Blood Angel books. That's pretty impressive, actually. I wouldn't call them the best thing I've ever read, but they're, you know, at the acceptable schlock level I expect out of generic fantasy sci-fi book. That's a pretty big hype factor for you to say that about a Space Marine book. You have no idea. So for Blood Angels, you've got the whole honorable artistic warrior shtick. Like they're super into art. They like chisel out statues and make fine tapestries and all this stuff. Are they musicians? Everything. If it's art, nice. it's a Blood Angel thing. This is all because of them trying to use getting super into art as a way to, like, channel their vampireness so that they don't go crazy. <laughs> because their, their main shtick is just being vampires. And, like, we can say, no, they're not technically vampires because of, like, this minor... No, they're... They're straight up vampires, man. Read the Blood Angel books. They're vampires. It's not It's not a hint. It's not subtext. Yeah. They're fucking vampires. The only thing they're missing is the word in the 40k lore, because that doesn't exist here. It's like when zombies are called, like, the deadies. <laughs> the deadies, really? I don't know. What are they called on, like, is it The Walking Dead calls them just The Walking Dead because zombie doesn't exist in that universe? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Vampires are called Blood Angels. To be fair, like, that's not even, like, that big of a deal for 40k universe. No, it makes them kind of cool. Snacking on some blood from a civvy isn't that bad compared to some of the other things that go on. True. And to be honest, they, they have the, like, they have every vampire trope, for good or bad. If you're into that shtick, it's great. So they burn in the sun? No. Okay. I was like, I don't remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> that gets into the whole, like, technically they're not exactly vampires because they can eat garlic. They just right. drink blood, have all the, the like, bloodlust thing going on, and yeah. are tragic hero, anti-hero sorts who are, like, trying to help the good of the people, but also have this subconscious need to feed on them. Right, while hyping up, like artistry and creativity mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff yeah okay they've got all the vampire i mean that's cool i like it they like gameplay wise have a nice slant to their army construction of they tend to be very into mobile melee where they want to use a bunch of jump packs and you know play like close range repositioning a lot uh sanguinary guard is a special unit for them that's very jump pack heavy where you have angels flying around the board 
It is pretty cool. It's pretty neat. <laughs> the yeah. models are dated. I'll give them that. I would like to see some of them redone, but I do think like they still look cool. The general idea is there. You can yeah. see like it's an old sculpt, but it's an old sculpt that still has soul. Like I get what it was trying to be. Exactly. I just want it updated. I will say you also have like some of the best characters in Space Marines. You've got Dante, who is a great tragic hero character. If you go with 30k, Sanguinius is your Primarch. The guy scored a natural 20 in Charisma while designing his D&D character. A downside to that, though, he's dead dead. Like, on-screen death dead. He's not coming back comic book dead style. I don't know, man. He's a vampire. I've seen this dead vampire thing before. Well, specifically, he's an angel because he has the massive eagle angel wings. (laughs) Okay. But yes, he is the original vampire guy and he's got the whole Jesus stuff going on too, all that. But no, he's dead as like part of the 40k setting. Sanguinius has to be dead. Okay, kind of sucks, but that's fair. I mean, you got other characters like you said. Yeah, Dante is, for all intents and purposes, already Primarch tier. Yeah, and lore-wise, again, you're a big winner if you're into, like, figuring out the lore of your chapter and getting into it. You also have a bunch of actual fun successor chapters, like if you want to go Flesh Terrors, who are like, what if I want to be vampires, but I don't want to feel guilty about it? (laughs) What if I want to play Chaos, but not? Uh, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, basically, right? It do be a little coronate up in here. Just a bit. Blood for the Emperor. (laughs) Skulls for the Emperor's throne. (laughs) As a final plus side for Blood Angels, there's the favorite joke of Korn's favorite legion is the Blood Angels, not the World Eaters. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds right. Sounds right. Yeah. Korn really wishes that it was Sanguinius and not Angron he ended up with. We should move on to one of the other of my favorite chapters here, which is the Salamanders. Ah, okay, okay. The Salamanders get bonus points because out of all of the chapters of Space Marines, they are by far the most cut and dry good guys. Like, if you want to play Space Marines, but you don't want all the guilt associated with the fact that Space Marines are, like, pretty shitty... Yeah. Yeah, the Imperium's not a good place. It's not a nice place, no. But Salamanders are there to be the uh, exception that proves the rule. Well, because, I mean, they're supposed to just be, like, smiths and, like, forge workers and stuff like that, essentially. Yeah, and they're, like, the peace-loving hippies as far as warriors (laughs) go. (laughs) Peace-loving hippies in 40k. Yeah, sure, Brad. (laughs) As far as the souped-up space brains go they're as close as it gets as long as you're not an eldar child you have nothing to fear ah okay just don't ask vulcan about the eldar children (laughs) uh so salamanders have that going for them you also have as the name implies the uh whole fire aesthetic that salamanders love Uh, they take the we are the fire and the flame line a bit too seriously I will say there's a current downside to this, which is if you want to play like Salamander's Heavy Army in the game right now, there's not many units other than aggressors that are like super flamer heavy. I wish there was more support to make people want to play like flamer heavy Salamander's lists. That's something that I'm hoping to see improved as the Primaris couple last kits come out. Yeah, that would be nice. I have seen some lists from Salamanders that are pretty cool, but yeah, it would be nice to flesh it out a little bit more. As another note, like they're one of the only space marines that get to have like functional families and not have like weird daddy issues. Unfortunately, like I can't point very well to the parents and siblings and having your family still stuff because that's mostly in old lore and the new lore hasn't really confirmed or denied that yet. So are there female salamanders? No, no. Okay, so it's no. it's like still a problem, but it's like not that much of a problem as the other chapters. <laughs> it's the, every other chapter is the like, this space marine was built in a tube and has no memories of his weak humanity. Right. Salamanders are like, they still know their parents. 
That's kind of nice. But unfortunately, yeah, this is a potential old lore thing that hasn't really been updated in new lore as a yes-no thing, uh, which kind of gets into my last point here of warning, which is you don't really get as much lore as a lot of the other chapters because you're not dark and brooding. You'll get occasional lore, but you're treated more like every other faction instead of, you know, space marines. Are there, like, salamander-focused books? Or is it just, like... They're tacked onto it. This single sub-faction of Space Marines still has more books than most Xenos races. Okay, I was going to be shocked if you had said no. It's a comparison scale. Yeah, on the curve here. On the overall 40k curve, you're fine. In the Space Marine sub-faction curve, it's less. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Primark time before we move on. Right, right. Bad news... Your Primark is comic book dead, so, like, he might come back. It was an off-screen death. Okay. But probably won't, and he's not really required for the story to move forward. And he's got problems where the good news is he's probably the most likable Primark who is generally a good human being. Holy and shit. And, like, a good character and is, like, likable. <laughs> which <laughs> Which is unfortunately bad news because it means he's probably not coming back. Right. They already have Gilliman, and why do you need a second Gilliman who's slightly more ethical and slightly less logistical? Yeah. It's easier for them to bring back Lion and have him do something stupid and make that a <laughs> plot point. It is true. Good people don't make good plot lines to books. Well, they one is important, but we have right. the one, so we don't need the second. So it's unlikely you're going to see Vulcan come back. That being said, for the 30k lore, Vulcan is probably the best Primark from a like writing standpoint. He's written very well. Nice. So what do you want to go into next? What I believe is my actual favorite Space Marine chapter, which is weird. So the chapter we're going to talk about is Iron Hands. Oh, I thought it was Wolves. No. Why Eric thinks that's weird is... I kind of shit on the Iron Hands from a lore standpoint. You're one of the factions. Kinda? Kinda? I shit on them a lot. You're up there in my list of factions that could just be outright deleted to remove some Space Marine bloat. They're like the generic punching bag for Space Marines for you. It's them and Raven Guard, who we'll get to in a minute. Okay. And the Imperial Fists. So, if we're taking them seriously... Lore-wise, they do suck. Iron Hands, <laughs> you're not here for the lore, guys. What are you talking about? We're here to have Iron Hands. That's great lore. Iron Hands lore is essentially non-existent. You technically exist. You <laughs> technically had a Primarch, who was technically a character written in books. Ferris Manus is not a well-written character. I would argue he is close to not being a character and instead being a plot point for Fulgrim's character. With the greatest theme ever. And yeah, there's the whole Iron Hands, the leader of the Iron Hands, has Iron Hands. Iron Hands give themselves Iron Hands to honor Iron Hands, who had Iron Hands, and was Primarch of the Iron Hands. <laughs> the Primarch Iron Hands. <laughs> that alone is a selling point for Iron Hands. Just the like... It feels very, like, 80s comic book schlock of, this is funny because it's taken so extreme. Yeah, so we're not here for the lore in Iron Hands. I'm sorry if you are. <laughs> what you actually have going for you, and why I think they're my favorite Space Marine chapter, is gameplay. The reason I like them so much is they are one of the funnest alternate way to play Space Marines. I will do this a lot where my brother owns Blood Angels. They're painted up as Blood Angels. He has characters who are named characters. He has a Sanguinary Guard off to the side, all that. I will take his Space Marines, and I will use all of the vehicle units, and I will play them as the Bloody Hands successor chapter to the Iron Hands. This is my custom OC successor chapter that I play when I have to play Space Marines to figure them out. I really like them gameplay-wise. Like, from a... From a lore standpoint and gameplay standpoint, they are all about the vehicles. And as someone who is not a big fan of Space Marines, I'll admit, the Redemptor Dread is cool. Hell yeah, it is. 
the Levy Dread is one of my all-time favorite weird, dopey, but lovable models. God, I love Storm Cannon Leviathan Dreadnoughts. You really do. And it's like, they're not even that good. <laughs> no, they're like... bad. But look at that thing. He has all of those giant cannons. I love the Derradeo because the Derradeo looks like it's from Garan Lagan. Is that the one? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a boat. He's a boat with legs. <laughs> I like the gladiator, especially the reaper gladiator with the chain gun. Mm -hmm. That one's cool. I like space marine vehicles for the most part. Like as much as I like shitting on you guys, I like your vehicles. I really like dreadnoughts. They're cool. So that's what I like playing. So Iron Hands has kind of, in a way, gone from like a please delete this bulk chapter to my favorite thing to play but also still please delete this because it's eating up space right <laughs> we could combine several space marine chapters in my opinion no that's heresy we're not going that direction on this episode we have to hype them all up i am under obligation <laughs> yeah so iron hands primar dead uh, yeah. Okay, dead. Ferris Manus is very dead. He, again, is barely a character. He is more a plot device for Fulgrim turning to chaos. Okay. He got his head removed. Ah, okay. Because I, I, was, I was like, I know that he's dead, but I wasn't sure if it was like dead dead. No, straight up on-screen decapitation, fatality. The Mortal Kombat guy showed up and everything. Nice. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, he ain't coming back, nor does anyone care to bring him back, including Iron Hands players. <laughs> All right, then. So let's move into the Raven Guard, the other forgotten children nobody cares about. Hello, Raven Guard players, all three of you. <laughs> I don't know the Raven Guard, like, at all. What do they do? Sneak. They're Sneak? the sneaky boys. Okay. They're like if Alpha Legion had boring lore. Oof. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to hype this up, Brad. You're under obligation. So, Raven Guard, my hype up for you is, do you like the tactical look of the Phobos armor? You're allowed to say yes. It's probably my favorite Space Marine look, though I do really like Gravis and Terminator armor. I like the heavy, and I like the tactical. I don't like the middle ground tactical marines, intercessors. I don't like that look. The standard Space Marine looks like crap to me, but... I'll give you the super heavy guys, and I will give you the looks more like Master Chief guys. Yeah, so I just I just took a quick look at some of those, and I'll give it to you. It's kind of cool. The Phobos Marines, are they're the lighter armor. They look very nice. If you want a lore-accurate reason to play a ton of Phobos in your army, Raven Guard's a great excuse. All right. The coolest thing Raven Guard have is unfortunately not part of the game. Their Primarch is still technically alive. He is off in the warp as a giant demon vulture we're not allowed to see because that would be too cool. What? And he is hunting down his brother to kill him. So he's a demon. Yes, but a good demon. But a good demon. Although good is in air quotes because it's still Imperium aligned. He believes he is good. Okay. Basically, Zinch is weird. I was going to say, like, that's just Zinch fucking with him, right? Yeah. Okay. I forgot to actually name the Raven Guard Primarch. I forgot to actually name the Primarch Corvus Corax, who is <laughs> a crow man. <laughs> so, Raven Guard, Corvus Kovax, and now he's a demon vulture. Yeah, a okay. uh, little on the nose. Anyway, so he, he's on his like vengeance quest because he is the most emo motherfucker. If you are into the emo scene and think emo is cool, Raven Guard is also for you. Sign up. This is the emoist. You make the Dark Angels look like clowns. They are the happiest people alive compared to you. But yeah, Corvus is the ultra emo, proto emo, emo distilled Primarch. And he's on his vengeance quest in the warp. And because he's been there too long, he has become a vulture demon. Dude, I can't wait for that to actually become a model. It's going to be great. That model is painful that it doesn't exist. Like, I get that he's, like, not a well-beloved character because he's kind of forgettable, like his entire chapter. But, like, why don't we have giant demon vulture Primarch? That's the coolest fucking thing. It is pretty cool. Raven Guard would become, like, the third to first most popular chapter 
if Corvus got that model. Probably just for the sheer interesting aspect of having that in an Imperium army. <laughs> Have I been calling him a vulture instead of a raven? I don't know. Okay. He's a demon raven. I don't know if I've been saying vulture this whole time because I have a brain condition. I think you might have because vulture sounds like what I called him as well because you did. But yeah. maybe that was just me calling him a vulture because it's a bird. The word is raven. Makes sense. Raven guard. Yeah. I'm not going back and re-recording that entire chunk. R- raven guard's not worth it. All right, then. <laughs> Let's move on to something that's definitely worth it. The Imperial Fists. I was required by the patrons to say that line. Yeah. The Imperial Fists are, by no small margin, my least favorite of the standard Codex-compliant chapters, you could call them. But you still love them because you're hyping them. I'm forced to love them. I actually do have positives. So, like, okay, Imperial Fists, if I'm trying to sell you, your armor is yellow. It's very eye-catching. That alone may make you become an Imperial Fist player. I would argue that's how most of you became Imperial Fist players because no one's doing it for another reason. Anyway, uh, you are the wall. They are the fortress, the final line of defense if we don't count the custodies. Yeah, I was like, except for the other wall. <laughs> <laughs> the first wall. They are the great bastion. They are the defenders of, you know, yeah. That that's their shtick. They're holding off the White Walkers. Yes, exactly. Heavy Bolters is like their shtick. It's their thing. They like the big guns defending the fortress. Because of that, I actually really like Ravis Heavy Intercessors. Like, a big yellow list of all of that looks very cool on the tabletop. I'm not going to lie. And as someone who's a fan of Gravis armor, I'm here for that. I would rather play them in Iron Hands personally but Imperial Fist is a valid option and is very pretty. There's not too much else to Imperial Fist if I have to stay positive here. So is there like, that's a dumb question, is there? How many books of this faction, sub-faction are there? Surprisingly, a lot. Okay. One of my negatives for Imperial Fist is you are the backup Ultramarines. You are the, what if we have vanilla and other vanilla? Are they kind of treated like, special guard to a certain point of like no it's so they are better than just like hey there's generic guard yeah the thing with imperial fist too is we're not gonna get into all of the successor chapters right yeah but there's there's two memes one is everyone is an ultramarine successor chapter and the other one is everyone is an imperial fist successor chapter they have like one of the most stable gene seeds so there are a lot of them which means they get split up into a bunch of sub-chapters because of how 40k works. Fair enough. So, like, while Imperial Fists only have a section of books, Imperial Fist successor chapters, if you pile them all together, is like a library. Wow. They have so many successor chapters I'm not covering. I'm not covering Crimson Fists today. I'm not covering the Minotaurs today. Also, you're going to find that every Imperial Fist successor chapter... Can it chew Black Templars? All of them have huge anger issues and are incredibly violent towards innocents. The Imperial Fists technically don't have that as part of their imagery, but it kind of points to Daddy's problem of Rogel Dorn is a huge dickhead and probably has done more damage to the Imperium on accident trying to help than most of the traitor Primarchs did on purpose trying to. Yeah, I remember you bringing up a few of those. He's the cause of many problems, and if the Black Templars agree that Dad was a huge dickhead who should have listened to his brothers more often, holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, then. So Primarch is not what is going to sell you into that. Ironically, sort of. Oh, yeah? Because Rogel Dorn in If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device, which is where most people get their 40k lore from, is fucking amazing. And is one of the greatest characters written. Rogaldorn, the difference between canon Rogaldorn and Rogaldorn in TTS is night and day. And I wish TTS Rogaldorn was in every real book where Rogaldorn shows up. (laughs) Can we just have him, please? 
Okay, okay. I mean, that's fair. I mean, TTS was good stuff. I miss it every day. <laughs> yeah, rip. All right, let's move into White Scars. We need to go fast. I like going fast. Not just because there's not much to talk about here, but because the White Scars are fast. Speedwa. Uh, Speedwa, yes, absolutely. If your buddy plays Orcs and you want to like have a really fun rivalry thing going on, right? White Scars versus Speed Freak Orcs is like 10 out of 10 fun. Like the coolest thing to be doing. That's cool, man. I'm here for it. Just as a reminder of how gotta go fast oriented the White Scars are, they eat something called Speedweed. You've also got the whole like Mongol Raiders theme going on that you can play into to have like some character to your army instead of, you know, ultra vanilla. And I think that's an important part of why I like certain chapters. I like when a chapter is different from Ultra Marine. Yes, feels like it has a reason yeah. to exist that isn't just ultramarines in a different outfit. Uh, so you get a lot of points if you like get some really cool kit bashing going on for that. And I've seen amazing kit bashes for White Scar stuff. There is also the like shamanistic approach to it, where the White Scars are one of the better Psyker chapters. Oh, okay. They've got like the whole. They're like the reverse of Thousand Suns. They are ultra um diligent super respectful of the warp and and like they're the ultra control like the shaman monk yes whereas you've got sorcerers in thousand suns who are the i'm gonna slam back the entire bottle of warp juice and go for it yeah if it blows me up well somebody else will learn that that blows me up yep (laughs) so you've got the cool thing to go from the librarian standpoint there there is the basic if you want to play fast this is the strike fast strike hard gotta go fast sonic the hedgehog army jagat icon was not a subtle man although i can't say that memes of jagat icon do not make him a subtle man he's actually a pretty zen dude oh that's the primark okay. yeah <laughs> he's actually a pretty cool dude just like normal con from our real world really chill dude certain ones not not the <laughs> one you're thinking of <laughs> i do give jagatai extra bonus points for not liking the emperor or his imperium he was building in 30k and just kind of going along with it because he was like if i resist they'll just kill my planet so screw it i'll try to make this the least shitty result possible did he succeed no <laughs> okay I actually don't remember if he's off-screen dead or if he just stops existing at one point. I'm pretty sure he, like, <laughs> went to fight Drukari in the webway, left screen, and never comes back. It just He's just he's just out for lunch, man. No, he's, he's getting milk. <laughs> he went out for cigarettes, and yeah. maybe he'll be back one day. Went to the corner store. He'll be back. He, unfortunately, like Vulcan, suffers from the, like, as a heartless businessman standpoint, there's no reason to add him back into the story because you already have Gilliman fulfilling that role. You right. don't need Gilliman, but already hated the Imperium in 30k, whereas Gilliman learned to hate it in 40k. Yeah. White Scars is pretty simple. You'll know if you like it. They have an amazing color scheme. Stark white with red and yellow is very eye-catching. It's really nice with just the little accents on the white armor. One of the coolest looking factions. Pain in the ass to paint. It can be made easy. I'm not saying it's impossible to paint. Like, don't be afraid if it's your first army. You're like, oh god, I don't know if I can do this. You can do it. I'm just saying. There's easier choices. You just gotta add racing stripes to the white. It's good enough. Red racing stripes so that orc players will agree you have to go faster now. Yeah, exactly. All right, it's time to talk about my other favoritist faction. I was like, you're obligated to hype this faction up, Brad. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, I am a Thousand Suns character. (laughs) This is my VTuber avatar I have chosen. Look, Mom, I finally made it. I'm a VTuber now. Yeah. So the Space Wolves exist and definitely didn't commit a shitload of war crimes. (laughs) I love them. They have Norse themes. God of War is a video game. 
That's true. Boy, do they love wolves. Some would say in the Catholic way. Oh. I'm not going to insinuate that. Yeah, I was going to say, that's getting dangerous close to that. Not hyping, Brad. So you get to have a lot of wolves and a lot of Vikings. If you like those, maybe the Space Wolves is for you. Norse, Viking, crazy man. Prospero burned, though. I'm just saying. That's a thing that happened. <laughs> is that a good thing that happened? No. <laughs> Technically, the Space Wolves in modern day are supposed to be one of the more... Uh, helpful of the Space Marine chapters, one of the ones that has a higher likelihood of saving civilians, stuff like that. As a Thousand Suns player, I don't believe this propaganda. <laughs> they didn't just kill the Thousand Suns, they killed the Thousand Women and the Thousand Children, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Space Wolves, if I'm not memeing for a moment, are pretty fun one of our friends in our playgroup plays space wolves we got him it for christmas years ago and he's built up an impressive collection they're fun to play with they're fun to play against you do rely a lot on old marines which is a problem because again some of these scalps are pretty ugly i'm not gonna lie yeah it's another one that i'm expecting new models to come out it's weird though because a lot of these ugly ass space wolf models are some of the last old marine models that existed. Like the wolfen are shockingly new and they're heinously bad. Are they really? It's weird. They're newer than like the entire Grey Knight line. Wow. I mean, okay. Space wolves is a mixed bag. You can field a lot of Primera stuff, but like the things that make Space Wolves Space Wolves, like all your Wolfen units and all of your Thunderwolf cavalry, all that stuff is Old Marines still. Your characters are mostly Old Marines still. Yeah. It's the downside. You're going to have your Short Kings. You're going to have squatty, dumpy, little terrible models compared to everyone else's nice new shiny ones until you get your special units updated to Primaris scale. That's just a realistic warning that we have to put out there. Yeah, I mean, there is a decent amount of kit bashing that you can do to make them better. Absolutely. Prints and stuff like that. 3D prints of yeah. Space Wolf Thunderbolt Cab are not uncommon. No, and there's some pretty cool ones. Like, they're actually cool, not just like yeah. memeing. They're like pretty cool. <laughs> and I have seen people who have 3D printed bear-themed space bear armies, which is a Space Wolf successor chapter that is not official, but everyone loves it, so it exists. Yeah, bears are cool. It's fucking dope, man. Yeah. Like, as someone who likes Warhammer Fantasy stuff, because I came into this hobby through Total War... <laughs> yeah. Anything that reminds me of Keyslive and Bear Cav is dope as hell. So, like... Like, the entire reason Keyslive is cool is because of bears. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, it's just Russia. Yeah, it's just Russia. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot you can do Space Wolves-wise, especially if you're into, like, 3D model printing, stuff like that. It, this could be a huge fun project, depending how you want to go. As a last note for Space Wolves, though, your Primark, while I'm still thinking of it, he definitely had one of his hearts punched out by Magnus. TTS has added that lore to canon. It's real. <laughs> okay. Also... Always remember that Lehman Russ is named after the battle tank. All right, then. <laughs> These are true facts. We're only spitting true facts on this episode. I have my doubts, but, you know, I'm not the lore guy, so I'll accept what you're telling me. <laughs> okay, so we have made it through all nine Space Marine chapters that matter. Because there's nine Primarchs. There is nine Loyalist Primarchs, uh, so nine is the correct number. Right. Unfortunately, there are entire books of rules written for other stuff. So we're going to bring up two more chapters in air quotes. The first being Death Watch, which I don't even know if it is a chapter, and I'm not going to look it up. To hype up the Death Watch for you, my positives are you're able to use non-Imperium tech on your characters. Like you can have a character who's got like a Necron staff, stuff like that, which is very Primarch-esque. Because the more you read Horus Heresy stuff, the more you realize that all the Primarchs said buy American and then bought a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
and you get to use a lot of the non-standard unit layout stuff like you can have two bike guys and three guys on foot and that's one unit like you can do weird stuff and have it be a legal unit in death watch because you are the kill team game where you like mix and match and every character is a unique is based off of death watch kill teams where they're super adaptive and one guy will be in a gravis suit another guy's in whatever I think that's why I do actually like Death Watch is because they're unique. No, you like Death Watch because they're part of the Inquisition and they are essentially Grey Knights but not Psychers. They're I mean, they're just you but only a part of you. Yeah, that probably helps. <laughs> I'm not considering Grey Knights a chapter of Space Marines because they're not. They're not set up the same way. No. They don't give a shit about the Primarchs. Their Primarch is technically the Emperor. We're not going to talk about how that works because the lore doesn't want us to know. It doesn't matter. They're psychers. <laughs> they kill demons. That's all that matters. But Death Watch is neat. You have options and you can build things in interesting ways and it looks cool. Yeah, and you get a lot of weird options that no official chapter gets, like right. shotguns. <laughs> Yeah, there's some cool stuff with Death Watch. There's also, I will give them wholeheartedly. It is very cool that your chapter, when you make it, you can give pauldrons from all the other chapters you can think of and have like an ultramarine next to an iron hand next to a white scar next to a raven guard. And that's all one unit because that's the Death Watch thing is everybody sends people to the Death Watch it's like half punishment, half boot camp, half reward. Very strange. Yeah, and I mean, that is kind of nice if you're interested in really customizing. Like, you can go further than just like, oh, I'm going to customize all my Death Watch to be kind of the same. It's cool to be able to be like, oh, yeah, this guy's an ultramarine, but he's part of my Death Watch. Upside downside thing Death Watch's whole theme is being the Xenos Hunters, which is why they get to use Xenos tech. Because hypocrisy. Inquisition. Sounds right. Yes, exactly. So gameplay wise, it can feel a little weird. You don't have as much as you used to for like, haha, I'm a hard counter versus this specific Xenos trick, but I can't do anything special against two thirds of the game. It's less like that now, but there's still little things that may tick off your friend, even though like math wise, they're not a big deal. Okay, Just yeah. because, like, screwing with reanimation protocols is kind of a dick move. They already suck. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. The, the kind of stuff that's, like, it should just be in, like, Crusade rules. Yeah, Death Watch should just be in Crusade rules, but I'm supposed to be positive on this episode. I mean, that there could be positive, you know. It could be a great Crusade list. That's positive. If you're into Crusade, 100%, Death Watch would be a cool Crusade. Yeah. I would give Space Wolves that one, too, as, like, a final point to give them positive, is Space Wolves have really cool rules about their sagas and, like, building up the lore of your characters, and it's a very neat thing. But we've got one last elephant in the room, the successor chapter that has an entire book written for it. Why? (laughs) Hello, Black Templars. I must speak kindly of you for some reason. Uh, This is a successor of the Imperial Fists. To hype up the Black Templars, they are the warrior monk trope. They are the monastery monks who are warriors. Like, if you like that aesthetic, Black Templars is your go-to. They are also the Crusaders. If you wish you were just playing a fantasy game where you are playing medieval Crusaders, Black Templars is for you. Is that just, like, aesthetically or, like, also lore-wise, they're just, like, a Crusader? Both. Okay. The Black Templars, aesthetically, look like Crusaders from the Crusades. They wear black and white. They have the symbol of the, what is it, is it the multi? One of these is going to piss off people who know war shit. I'm sorry I don't know the difference between the different types of dangerous iconography. That could mean very problematic real-world history bullshit, and one of them is technically innocent even though they look the exact same. Right. But it's the one that you've seen on, like, crusading old stuff. Sure. (laughs) It's the plus sign, but it's fancy. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it's called a Maltese cross, but I don't know, and that might be the problematic one that it gets mistaken for. 
and I'm going to move on. Fair enough. It's not the Red Cross. Uh, no. Man, the Black Templars are a fucking problem child. Uh, but lore-wise, they match that by their lore is they are always on crusade. Against. It doesn't matter. The Xenos? Demons? Doesn't matter. Other Imperium? always on crusade. The Black Templars are the malicious compliance chapter. <laughs> okay. They read the Codex Astartes, and it said... You can only have more than a thousand space marines if you're on crusade, where it's expected you're going to take a lot of casualties, so you can overbulk beyond a thousand. Yeah. And technically, you can have any number of chaplains as long as it's one per world or something weird. So the Black Templars are always on crusade, taking over new planets. Nice. Therefore, they are a legion hidden as a Codex compliant chapter. <laughs> If you want to play the bad guys, like, unashamedly, Black Templars is for you. The, like, actually really bad guys. If you want to be the horrible dickheads, you want to have <laughs> no redeeming qualities, you want to play Drukhari, but you want power armor, <laughs> Black Templars are for you. I play Drukhari. This isn't an insult. No, I mean, it's fun to be the bad guy. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to have a tragic... Maybe I'm kind of good, but, oh, I'm troubled. No, no. I'm the bad guys. Yeah, right. Sometimes it's you just want to be the not good person. That's fair. You got to admit, it, there's a lot of others on this list that have been kind of bad. That have been, like, trying to be, like, oh, put a positive spin on it. I like the Black Templars just being, like, not nah, we're on crusade. Fuck everybody. I hope I never have to do this again. I hope this was entertaining for you all and hopefully informative but i can't take this anymore let's get out of here sounds good